Hello everyone, welcome back to general embryology sessions. So we shall continue with the third week of development which is a quite critical uh, part of uh, general embryology because during the third week of development we see the development of trilamina, germ disc, primitive streak and intraembryonic mesoderm. So till the second week it is considered to be pre-embryonic period and from third week till eighth week uh, the development is considered to be a embryonic period. So we see the embryo between third week to eighth week. Previous to the third week it is considered as conceptus and beyond eighth week it is fetus. So that is uh, quite important uh, significant change happening and we see during this period we see the, the development of three germ layers that is during third to eighth week we see the development of uh, germ layers that is ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm which gives rise to it, its own tissues and organs. So as a result of organ formation and major body features form or establish. So by the end of the embryonic period it will be like a small miniature human uh, uh, embryo. So the, may, may, the most characteristic events occurring during the third week of uh, development that is during 14th to 21st day of gestation are the gastrulation. Gastrulation for, uh, means formation of trilaminar germ disc which is a very critical event and apart from that we will see the development of primitive streak notochord and neural induction and also the left and right asymmetry that uh, left and right uh, differentiations and also craniocaudal axis all this uh, developed during third week. So during the third week the embryo blast acquires to form a disc and becomes a trilaminar germ disc con that is it consists of three germ layers and uh, from su superficial to deep these layers are ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. And it is utmost important uh, for everyone to know, uh, to understand uh, the formation of these three germ layers from embryo blast because all the tissues and organs of the body are derived from one or more of these layers. So these are the events. So these are the events happening during the third week of development. So let's see. And one more thing I forgot to say is the size of the embryo uh, that is conceptus that is at the end of the second week would be 0.4 mm. By the end of the third week the size the embryo grows up till 2 mm. So in the beginning of the third week uh, we see the uh, already formed structures that is the bilaminar germ disc which we saw at the end of the second week where we saw the epiblast, hypoblast cells, amniotic cavity, yolk sac cavity and around which uh, we have got extra um, embryonic coelom and also the extra embryonic mesoderm, cytotrophoblast, syncytiotrophoblast, implantation all this we saw in the second week. So at the end of the second, in the beginning of the third week the most important thing which is seen is the primitive streak. So at the beginning of the third week, a longitudinal ridge appears in the midline in the caudal end of the dorsal aspect of bilaminar embryonic disc. So this is a dorsal aspect of bilaminar embryonic disc means here that is the caudal side within the epiblast a ridge will form which is called as primitive streak. It appears during 15th day of intrauterine life. Primitive streak is visible on the dorsal aspect of the embryonic disc towards the uh, that is uh, forming a floor of the amniotic cavity and uh, it is an opaque streak hence it is called as primitive streak and it is formed due to the proliferation of epiblast cells. So the epiblast cells will divide to form this primitive streak. So the epiblast cells are nothing but the primitive ectodermal cells which proliferate and move forwards and in the midline and in the midline the cells from both the sides heap up to the formation of elevation called as primitive streak 
the cranial end of the primitive streak is quite thickened and bulged which is called as primitive node or Henson's node. So the cranial end of the primitive streak, the cells proliferate and form a rounded elevation called as primitive node or uh, primitive knot or Henson's node. So further continuation with the primitive streak here, here I can show the blue colored cells are the epiblast cells and yellow ones are the hypoblast cells. So primitive streak starts developing at the end of second week that is during 14th to 15th day of intrauterine life and continues in the third week of gestation. It appears on the dorsum or the back of developing embryo at the caudal and the posterior end. So because of the appearance of primitive streak, the embryo develops craniocaudal axis means we will be knowing which is the caudal end of the embryo and which is the cranial end of the embryo. So this uh, the cells after this keep proliferating because they are highly pluripotent stem cells rapidly dividing. So the proceeds growth towards the cephalic or the anterior end. So it originates from the anterior epiblast and appears uh, as an elongated groove. So you can see here from not uh, from the caudal side of the epiblast we can see the groove starts developing. This is the caudal end of the embryo. So this section is a sagittal section where you can see the amniotic cavity, yolk sac cavity and connective stalk, extra embryonic mesodom, cytotrophoblast and uh, this is the primitive streak. So if you take a section in the primitive streak, so this is the coronal section, this is the sagittal section. So in coronal section you can see the primitive streak which is highly dividing and the anterior end of the streak is called primitive node or the cranial end is called primitive node or primitive knot or Henson's node. So one thing we have to note down primitive streak is derived from epiblast cells. And uh, the rostrocaudal and the midline lateral axis of the embryo are defined by the primitive streak. And we know that Henson's node which is the cranial tip of the primitive streak contains a depression. So if you see the cranial end, this is the caudal end, this is the cranial end. So the cranial end will show a pit or a depression which is called as primitive pit. And primitive pit is continuous with the primitive groove. So the presence of primitive streaks determine the side of gastrulation and initiation of germ layer formation. So primitive streak is a groove from, from the epiblast at the caudal end of bilaminar germ disc stage and embryo through which the epiblast cells migrate to form endoderm, mesoderm during gastrulation. So this primitive streak which is highly proliferating which is derived from the epiblast, the cells will form the endoderm and intraembryonic mesoderm. Altogether, it forms three germ layers called as gastrulation. So primitive node is the uh, elevated region on the cranial end and the primitive streak that is known as the primary organizer because uh, it uh, uh, regulates the important process such as gastrulation and also the formation of notochord and craniocaudal axis. So, uh, that is the that is the reason it is called as primary organizer and primitive pit is the depression in the primitive node which we already know. So that is about the primitive streak. So after primitive streak formation let us see the gastrulation. Gastrulation is the process where we see the three germ layers develop. So we know the bilaminar germ disc has got two layers. And now the two layered structure will turn to form three layers. We will see how it is. So gastrulation is the most characteristic event occurring during the third week of gestation because it forms three germ layers and from these three germ layers all the tissues and organs of the body develop. So the process of formation of these three germ layers is called as gastrulation. First what happens the embryoblast cells differentiate into two layers during second week. The superficial layers of flat cells are called as the hypoblast which is yellow colored cells and columnar cells called as 
epiblast cells epiblast cells otherwise we can say primitive ectoderm and hypoblast we can say it as primitive endoderm so we know now the primitive streak is formed in the caudal end of the epiblast and these cells are highly proliferating so first they start dividing dividing and they will replace all the endoderm that is hypoblast cells or primitive endodermal cells to form a definitive endoderm to form a definitive endoderm so the embryo is in the at this stage uh, where uh, the the epiblast forms a linear thickening in the midline which is called primitive streak and primitive streak gives rise to third layer that is the mesoderm and it lies between ecto and endoderm so during the formation of three germ layers uh, the embryonic structures also develop so in this region the node and the streak uh, and the epiblast cells move inward and forming a new layer of cells so first they form a new layer of cells replacing the endoderm and then second they form again a new layer of cells which form a sandwich between ecto and endo primitive ectoderm and endoderm now this is no more called primitive ectoderm it is called as definitive ectoderm and definitive endoderm and in between the intraembryonic mesoderm develops so the cells which do not migrate from the primitive streak but remain in the epiblast form the ectoderm and hence the epiblast will give rise to all three germ layers so source of these three germ layers is epiblast so ectoderm mesoderm endoderm all these three layers will form different tissues and organs in our body so the first layer which is formed is the endoderm so from the primitive streak the first layer which is formed is the endoderm and then mesoderm and the cells which are already remaining in in the epiblastic layer will form the ectoderm so the epiblast cells forming the node and the streak are predetermined by their position to become a specific type of mesoderm and endoderm so thus it is uh, possible to construct a fate map of epiblast showing this pattern so we can see here the direction of the growth of epiblast cells from the primitive streak turning a bilamina to a trilaminar germ disk so the blue one is the uh, ectoderm and yellow one is the endoderm and red one which is growing in between these two layers would be the mesoderm which is invading so we can see the growth of mesoderm so intraembryonic mesoderm occupies between the ecto and endoderm everywhere except at two sites one is at the oropharyngeal membrane where the ecto and endoderm will come in contact with each other without intervening uh, mesoderm similarly the cloacal membrane on the caudal aspect where ecto and endoderm inter directly in contact with each other without intervening intraembryonic mesoderm so these membranes are temporary and they rupture oropharyngeal membrane ruptured forms future mouth and uh, cloacal membrane uh, later ruptures to form uh, like it divides to form urogenital membrane and anal membrane and ruptures the openings of anus and urogenital canals so except these two everywhere the in mesoderm will intervene and the direction of the growth of uh, mesoderm and replacement of endoderm is already predetermined because of genes so this uh, can help to make a pattern so by the end of the third week we see all the three germ layers develop and establish like head region and the process continues to produce the germ layers and uh, to form a caudal areas and the embryo until the reach the fourth week it keeps growing and tissues and the organs differentiate and thus begin and it uh, occurs in a cephalocaudal direction as the gastrulation continues so that is the reason the cranial side of the embryo will be quite larger and the caudal will be narrow taking up a almost a pear shaped embryo so initially in bilaminar germ disk if you see it is appear to appears to be like a circular shape after the appearance of primitive streak growth uh, the we can see the cells migrate towards the cranial end of the embryo and making the caudal end narrow so the growth is always the cephalocaudal in direction
So let's see the genes responsible. The major uh, signals present in the gas relation and node and uh, anterior visceral endoderm. So there are the signaling pathways. So the sonic hedgehog gene and BMP4 that is bone morphoprotein, uh, morphogenetic protein. So these are the signaling genes which uh, make the primitive streak to grow and also to form a particular pattern. So we can see the growth pattern here, caudal. So primitive node position that is called nodal genes are there. Primitive streak and induces the neuronal uh, neural differentiation. So once the primitive streak forms, notochord will form. Notochord will induce the development of neural tube and nervous system. And also anterior visceral endoderm from primitive streak secretes factors that position the primitive streak in posterior and induce the head formation. So finally one simple thing to be known is epiblast is the source of all varieties of cells, most of the cells. So epiblast will form ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. So all three germ layers are from epiblast. Apart from that epiblast will form primitive streak. Primitive streak will form this meso and endoderm actually. And also amniogenic layer from are also derived from the epiblast cells. So that was about the gas relation. So we saw the primitive streak development and gas relation. Let us move on to third event which happens during the third week of development that is the notochord formation which is called as coda mesoderm. So notochord arises from the epiblast cells. So we can see this columnar cells which are the epiblast cells and uh, which are from the medial part of the primitive node and that is the mid line, mid, middle part of the primitive node where the pit forms primitive pit. So the pit will grow down forming a canal or a tubular structure which grows till the oropharyngeal membrane that is the procaudal plate. Till here it grows and it uh, limited by the procaudal plate. So this tube is uh, the uh, primitive notochord. So notochord arises from where? From epiblast cells that is from the primitive streak, the medial part of primitive node and it is also called the axial mesoderm in an early uh, embryo in the it, which is a midline structure present in the trilaminar uh, embryonic mesoderm. Initially it, when it lies ventral to the ectoderm and then uh, neural plate and uh, finally the neural tube forms uh, just uh, above to it and it is a transient embryonic anatomic structure and not existing in adults and it defines the axis of the embryo and it is required for the induction and patterning the surrounding tissues. So the patterning signal secreted by the notochord cells are already I said sonic hedgehog uh, genes uh, which are the signaling genes and also it forms uh, in the third week and eventually it is lost in the vertebral uh, regions and contributes in the formation of nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc and also apical ligament of dense and the, those are the remnants of notochord in adults. So uh, remnants of notochord in adults are uh, nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc and next is apical ligament of dense. And it is uh, like it is like synchronizing the development of neural tube. And I said earlier about BMP4 that is bone morphogenetic protein gene. Uh, the activity of this BMP4 and dorsalize the mesoderm to form a notochord and somatomeres in the head region. Somite formations we would see in the next uh, sessions. So somites are also influenced by BMP4. The neurotransmitter which is called as serotonin 5-HT also plays a role in establishing the laterality of restricting nodal expression to the left side. So normal left right positioning of the organs is called as situs solitus. So normal right left position that is liver is on the right side, stomach is on the left side. 
so these positions heart is towards the left side of the body so all these positions of the organs is normal position is called as situs solitus and whereas their complete reversal is called as situs inversus when uh, where one or more organs are abnormally positioned uh, it is called as situs ambiguous or heterotaxy so here we can see the uh, epiblast and hypoblast bilaminar germ disk here we can see the primitive streak developing so amniotic cavity this is the yolk sac cavity so here is the primitive streak so from the primitive here is the primitive streak which is grown on the caudal side from the primitive streak we see the growth of notochord so these are epiblast here this is the connecting stalk so this is the sagittal section this one and this one are the sagittal sections but here we can see from the dorsal view of the embryo so we can see both sections this is the coronal section and uh, we can see the growth of primit from the primitive node so this is the primitive streak from the primitive pit we can see a tube starts developing till here this tube is the notochord so the blue cells are ectoderm it is trilamina germ disk now endoderm yellow cells are the endoderm so we can see the notochord developing and this is also the notochord so situs solitus is the normal positioning of the organs situs inversus means opposite side positioning and ambiguous means one or two organs is abnormally positioned it is called as situs ambiguous which is otherwise called heterotaxy one thing to be noted here individuals with situs inversus have low risk of having uh, other birth defects so this won't be associated with other birth defects this is normal we know solitus is normal but situs inversus is not usually associated with other birth defects but uh, the children have a, uh, especially for heart defects uh, the it may occur uh, in their offsprings and in contrast the patients with heterotaxy uh, there is a high risk of having many types of congenital malformations almost all will have some type of cardiac anomalies so it is always associated with the cardiac anomalies like um, septal defects uh, ventral septal defects ventricular septal defects uh, atrial septal defect uh, or uh, persistent foramen ovale coarctation of aorta all these can be associated so let's see again about uh, just about the notochord formation so we know the epiblast cells are here this is the procaudal plate where the ecto and endoderm are directly in contact with each other without intervening mesoderm and we see the formation of blastopore or primitive pit which continues here forming a tube like structure which is called as notochordal canal and uh, this canal uh, again the ventral side of the canal the cells will disappear so we can see the ventral side the cells are disappearing uh, forming a communication between the amniotic cavity and yolk sac cavity so this communication is called as neuroentric canal so neuroentric canal is a temporary communication because of degeneration a part of notochord and later what happens again a solid cord of cells will develop from the primitive pit and till the procaudal plate this solid cord of cells is called as definitive notochord so this is the sagittal section whereas these side images are the uh, coronal section so in coronal section you can see first a notochordal process then forming a canalized with lumen called as notochordal canal so the canal is there the ventral side of the canal is disrupted only one side it is there causing a communication and now this again diffused again one more solid cord of cells will form which is called as a definitive notochord 
so the origin of the primitive notochord is from primitive node or primitive pit so the primitive seek from the primitive pit cells proliferate and migrate cranially in the midline towards the buccopharyngeal membrane and form a rod like structure called as notochordal process and notochordal process it is a temporary structure where it uh, uh, forms nucleus pulposus and apical ligament of dense in adults so the note fuses with the uh, endoderm and form a notochordal plate here we can see so i'll just uh, repeat once the development so notochord formation epiblast cells at the floor of amniotic cavity in the blastopore region that is the primitive pit forms the notochordal process which later forms notochordal canal and fuses with the endoderm to form notochordal plate so we can see here it forms the notochordal plate here and then uh, this occurs in the ventral aspect of neural groove and which is an axial thickening of the endoderm takes place next and the thickening appears as a furrow and margins will anastomose and uh, they form so they convert into a polygonal shaped cells which is called as definitive notochord which is solid cord of cells and with this it then separated from the endoderm so notochord extends throughout the entire length of the future vertebral column and it reaches as far as uh, hook like extremity uh, dorsum of the which till the dorsum cell of uh, sphenoid bone later it is completely disappears except at intervertebral disc forming nucleus pulposus so initially it exists between the neural tube and the endoderm of uh, yolk sac but soon becomes uh, separated from by the mesoderm and which grows medially surrounds it and uh, mesoderm surrounding the neural tube and the notochord the skull forms the vertebral column skull and membranes of the brain spinal cord and all so just a simple gestation of notochord development development of notochord this is the notochordal canal the black one is the primitive streak so the second stage we can see the ventral side of the notochordal canal is disappear developing a communication between the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac cavity this is the yolk sac cavity this communication is called as neuroentric canal so the third stage is the definitive notochord so this is the connecting connecting stalk you all know and uh, this red one is the neural tube which is forming about to the notochord this is the notochord and this is the endoderm endoderm and here is the yolk sac cavity and this is the amniotic cavity so it is a temporary structure present in the midline between ecto and endo mesoderm on either side extends from the prochordal plate of the cranial end of primitive streak formed by the proliferation of primitive node and cells migrate pit between the endo ecto and endoderm forming head process primitive pit extends through the head process of notochordal canal the floor of the canal and underlying endoderm break down forming neuroentric canal the floor reappears proliferate to form a definitive notochord usually it disappears remnants form apical ligament of dense and nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc and um, cardomas cardomas means uh, suppose the notochord is not uh, degenerated fully and it may remains in the form of tumors called as cardomas and uh, when we see all these changes happening in the embryoblast cells there are certain changes happening in the trophoblast cells as well so by the end of the third week the three germ layers consisting of ecto meso and endoderm and are established in the head end and uh, process continues to produce to form all three germ layers more of caudal areas of the embryo so until the end of the fourth week we see all that tissues and organs differentiate begin and uh, cranio caudal direction of uh, gastrulation uh, continues and in the meantime uh, the trophoblast progress rapidly and primary villi obtain a mesenchymal core uh, in which the small capillaries will arise 
so we see the cytotrophoblast initially they grow as columns and they are called primary villi and within this uh, cytotrophoblast we see the extra embryonic mesoderm uh, that is somatic extra embryonic mesoderm grows into the core of the primary villi forming a substance which are called secondary villi and in the secondary villi we see the formation of blood vessels we would see again the trophoblast development and placenta development in one more session so we at this stage the villus capillaries make contact with the capillaries of chorionic plate and uh, connecting stalk and the villus system is ready to supply the embryo for its uh, nutrients and oxygen so these are the changes happening in the trophoblast the summary of the third week so we know the gastrulation i am not going to repeat again and cell settling between the epi and endoderm termed as mesoderm and which uh, is being called as mesenchyme in recent in recent years and epiblast cells will that is primitive uh, ectoderm is called ectoderm and we saw the formation of notochord and later uh, along with the neural tube we would see the development of neural crust cells which are considered to be fourth germ layer so what happens if uh, there is not enough gastrulation caudal agenesis so uh, the bone morphogenetic protein are the members of transforming growth factor e family and uh, that serve as a signal molecules for number of morphogenetic events so including the dorsalization of central nervous system participation of bone formation etc so caudal dysgenesis is called as serenomalia or mermaid syndrome and it is caused because of insufficient production of mesoderm by the primitive streak so premature regression of the primitive streak if the primitive streak regresses very soon uh, leads to a widespread of loss of trunk and the lower limb mesoderm so these are the associated defects vertebral defects anal we can remember as vater v a t e r vertebral defects anal defects tracheoesophageal fistula and renal defects and association defects are uh, cardiovascular defects and limb defects upper limb defects also so this is a mermaid syndrome otherwise called as serenomalia which occurs due to premature regression of primitive streak what happens if there is too much of gastrulation means if the primitive streak is not degenerated it is persistent for a longer time it results in formation of tumors which are called as sacrococcygeal teratomas so here we can see a sacrococcygeal teratoma so primitive streak fails to regress and multipotent primitive streak cells can develop into multi lineage tumors containing ecto endo and endodermal tissue mesodermal tissues so that was about uh, complete third week of development so let's see uh, two questions first to be developed is primitive pit groove fold or streak so i know the answer would be the primitive streak because it originates from anterior epiblast and appears as an elongated groove that is called, later it appears to form a groove called primitive groove which is present on the dorsal mid sagittal surface of epiblast and along the anterior posterior axis of the embryo and the rounded pit um, uh, head is called, the cranial part is called primitive knot or primitive node or henson's knot which contain a pit called as primitive pit the cranial tip of it is primitive node which contains a pit called as primitive pit so the first one to develop is the primitive streak which of the following is true regarding gastrulation establishes all three germ layers occurs at the caudal end of the embryo prior to the cephalic involves the hypoblast cells of the inner cell mass usually occurs in 4 weeks so answer definitely true is establishes all three germ layers okay that is happens during gastrulation so gastrulation is a process by which the epiblast cells undergo ingression 
and establish all three only epiblast not the hypoblast cells that is the reason hypoblast doesn't take part in the formation of gastrulation at all in formation of germ layers so doesn't involve the hypoblast cells and usually we know it occurs during third week not fourth week and it is first cephalic and then caudal cephalic caudal direction so gastrulation has cephalo caudal direction so it begins at the uh, cephalic end and proceeds towards the caudal end hence the three germ layers are first seen in the head region and consequently towards the tail region so with this i complete the uh, third week of uh, development thank you